We are in a time right now of extraordinary, extraordinary change. I'm a believer that the shortest distance between today and tomorrow is usually fact, is usually truth. I'm kind of like in the game of poker. I want to see what my cards are so that I can play them. For 11 years now, my team and I have been studying the next generation. We've been trying to figure out why do young people live where they live? Why do they work where they work? There is a lot of skepticism around lifetime employment, right? And for many very good reasons. Sometimes people say to me, Rebecca, can you tell when you go into a work environment whether it's really a great place, whether it really is a, a next company, a place that has high performance and good engagement? And after 11 years, I think I can. In my business, we're not so interested in today's data, but we always say the trend is your friend. If you were to study the next generation from an ethnographic perspective, if you were trying to sell them something, and in effect you are, if you want to sell them something, then what you want to do is see through their eyes. For most educated young professionals, and for any of you who are one of these people or who own one of these people, like you have one in college right now, or they're thinking about leaving college, you are probably hearing them talk about Live first, work second. Every 20 years, we go through some sort of an upheaval. Those of you who were alive during the 60s, you remember it. And then we had the 80s, right? And now we have our 2000 period of upheaval. And each of these sort of four seasons brings about different behaviors and a real change in like the zeitgeist. As you are engaging as employers, as people start talking about things that you never thought you would hear about, I want you to keep in mind this trend. We move seasonally through change. If there's one thing that we notice about the next generation of workers, it is that for them, they will choose this two to one over nearly anything else, life, work, balance. And this is hard to wrap your head around. In the 11 years that we've been studying the next generation, we've noticed that the cities that attract and keep them have some things in common. We turn those things in common into seven indexes, and each of you has this little workbook. We're going to start and we're going to go through the indexes and these develop a point of view. Because that's where a good exchange of ideas starts, is if you come with a point of view. We are in a very precious time when those of us who are alive have stewardship to say, if it is to be rebuilt in a way that is different, in a way that is more engaging, maybe most importantly, in a way that will last, what is our role? How do we build or rebuild a place that the next generation would be homesick for? How do we build that kind of place? And I think it starts with the, this first realization. Cities are for people. Cities were not originally built for cars. Cities were not built for giant parking spaces, right? Cities were built for people. There is a real change in the zeitgeist right now, a real fundamental change. And communities that get this are going to win.